Hi, my name is Mike and I am one of the internal education consultants here at The Profs. I've had a lot of years of experience in getting students into Oxford and Cambridge for a variety of different courses throughout my time in studying four different uh, degrees in mathematics at different universities, one of them being at the University of Exeter, one of them being at Cambridge itself, which is the university that we are going to be talking about in this video, and a further two postgraduate degrees at the University of Warwick. So it is my distinct pleasure in telling you guys how you might be able to get to study physics at an undergraduate level at the University of Cambridge. Now, Cambridge is a little bit special in their study of physics, so the only way that you can really study it is through what we call the Natural Sciences Tripos, or the NatSci Tripos. So actually, when you're making your application to Cambridge, you won't really be doing it specifically for physics. You'll be doing it for the Natural Sciences, but you want to write about physics in your application. And if we look at the success rate for this one, uh, they have a success rate of about 21.1%. Um, at the profs, we have over two times that success rate. So actually, if you like anything that you hear or see in this video, then please get in touch with us either by leaving a comment in the uh, comments section below where we can answer some of your questions or maybe by giving us a call or visiting our website using the information in the description for this video below. And my first tip to you out of five top tips is make sure that you understand what you're getting yourself in for. Uh, Cambridge is a very rigorous university. It is one of the most, if not the most prestigious university within the UK, especially to study physics, let alone many other subjects. So you really need to know actually what you're getting yourself in for. You cannot go and say you want to study Cambridge just to get the name. You wouldn't be able to go there because you really, really loved your subject. And in this case, you want to really talk about how you love physics. Now, the grade requirements for uh, studying physics, every single module within the Natural Sciences Trifos in first year, they have their own A-level grade requirements. And the grade requirements for uh, studying physics in the, your first year are gonna be two A stars and an A. You obviously want one of those to be physics, but that can be ma further mathematics instead with a really, really heavy component on those mechanic modules that make up the A-level. Um, if you're not studying the A-levels, um, doing the IB as well with a heavy physics or maths focus, maybe getting a grade between 40 to 42 is what is recommended. And uh, if you're taking sort of high level physics, maybe a score of at least 776 is what they recommend at the moment. But obviously, the better the grades you can get, the better your chances. And actually going in for the natural tripos, it might be a good idea for you to have an A-level in physics, an A-level in mathematics, and an A-level in another science subject. But often most people going to Cambridge would have a fourth A-level in another science subject. If you're not one of these people, that doesn't exclude you from going, but make sure you try to engage in science and mathematics overall as much as you can and then talk about perhaps in your personal statement, which you're sending off to multiple different universities as part of your UCAS application, why it is you want to study physics at university. Now moving on to tip number two, you want to show that you have a strong love for the natural sciences, in particular physics, as that's your chosen subject, as well as a strong aptitude for mathematics. We cannot assume that you can go into a natural sciences degree and not study any mathematics at all. In fact, it's highly recommended based on what particular direction you want to go down um, that you study either mathematics or uh, mathematical biology. Uh, at the moment. Those are two options of mathematics, which you're going to have to decide between those two. It's inevitable that you're going to be studying maths as part of this. So make sure you show strong quantitative even ability within your personal statement, um, within your interview, every single aspect of that admissions process. Um, in terms of showing your love for physics, there are many different ways that you can do this. And um, one typical thing that you will hear with any Oxbridge application 
is the reading. We want to start this early, ideally after the end of year 12, at the very latest when you've got a little bit of free time and you're going to be going into that summer period just before you go into applying for these courses. So the reason why I say this is because I've had so many students that have only just read maybe the blurb of uh, one of their books or the first chapter and actually claim, oh, I've done the reading. And then when I ask them specifics on it, they really don't know uh, what they're talking about. So make sure you start early, know what you're talking about. And it can only further not only your passion for the subject, but sort of your understanding of the potential for where it can take you. So it's really, really important that we have that down. I'd also recommend maybe um, taking part in the British Physics Olympiad. Your school might enroll you for this if you are really, really strong in physics, if they believe you're good enough. But you can apply for things like this. It does come with a bit of a price tag. You can apply as an, an external candidate. And the problems that you get introduced to as part of these competitions are very much the kind of problems that you might be expected to get if you were to go to a university like Cambridge. So it's really, really good that you get some exposure early on to at least of these kinds of questions. Not only does it show that you have a really good aptitude for the subject, it also gives you really, really good sort of material for those interviews that you've got at the University of Cambridge where they might ask you sort of similar leading questions. And finally, around that, there are going to be lots of public talks on physics, um, many articles that, that perhaps that you can read. There might even be some documentaries on it that might take your interest. Um, do everything you can to engage through, with your love of physics through public access. Um, there's lots of things available. All you've got to do is just go into Google, see what is available to you in your area. Maybe there is a talk at university local to you um, that is really, really interesting, that is open for the public. Why not go and see what that's like? Even better, maybe go to a summer school and engage in an international community of like-minded students, perhaps. Again, this is something that comes with a price tag, but it creates ample opportunity for people to engage in academic conversations um, and also gives you, as well, a really good idea of what it, it is to actually be at university. Um, so if you are actually one of those people who are still considering um, whether university is right for you, that might be a good opportunity for you to be able to see whether it fits with your interests. My third top tip at getting onto this course is make sure that you have a five-year career plan. And the reason why we say this pretty much in every single one of our Oxbridge applications is because it's not good enough just to be able to go that out of interest, although that does encompass, in terms of that academic side of things, roughly about 80% of your uh, UKIS application. Um, we also want to know that it's going to be a really useful degree for you. Um, so it, you, the way I sort of imagine that is that I would expect perhaps you to have an understanding of what you're going to be doing on your degree as if you were going into it tomorrow. Um, and the reason why we say five years rather than just one year is because I want to know about your dream job. I want to know about where you're hoping to be one day um, for perhaps your main career um, for the foreseeable future. And it's got to be something that is going to heavily relate to the degree that you're going in for. So with many people that go um, into the University of Cambridge, they mainly want to go into professional academia. They want to go into further research. They want to go into further study. Some people want to teach. That's a fantastic thing to be able to put down on your application if that meets your interests. If not, it is perfectly acceptable to be able to say that you want to move into a certain area of industry, but don't just say that you want to become uh, this role one day. You want to be able to talk about maybe a plan in getting there. Maybe it could be that you want to join in on a company as a fresh intern for a, a few years to be able to get some industry experience before transitioning into something a bit grander, uh, maybe something into management. So you want to relate this somehow, though, to physics itself. It, it cannot be completely arbitrary in terms of how those are linked together. Uh, this is something that we can help with at the profs if you want further advice on this. Um, moving on to the next tip, and this is a really fun one to be able to talk about with any sort of physics application, 
is that you want to investigate what are known as Fermi problems. And these are really fun problems. And I remember when I was talking to my family about these a while ago when I was younger, they would get very easily frustrated. Um, these are the kind of problems where you would ask, for instance, if I flicked a feather at the speed of light, what physically would happen as a result of that? Now, I know that sounds like a funny question, but what that does is it emphasizes critical thinking skills, which are going to be incredibly important um, in every single part of the admissions process, uh, whether you are talking about this in the middle of interviews or whether you're talking about that as part of your admissions test, which you will have to take uh, for the natural science tripos, um, particularly in the mass and physics sections, which are going to be the sections that mostly applies to your application. But if you start with these early, you get into that framework of not just thinking about physics within the context of your curriculum at school, but beyond that. You're thinking like a physicist that wants to be able to go into a similar profession within the field. And great exercise for these are Fermi problems. So you definitely have a look into them. They're really fun to investigate. And my final top tip uh, getting onto a course like this, again, that I say with every single Oxford application, is look for the help of an Oxbridge tutor. Now, not every school has experience with helping people getting into Oxford and Cambridge. Thankfully, at the Profs, we do. We have an extensive team of multiple uh, tuitions and consultancy tutors that can help you with every aspect of your application, whether it be to do with getting those A-level grades, preparing for the admissions test, preparing for the interviews, um, get, actually getting a really good personal statement on your, your UCAS application, or if just maybe fleshing out your CV. We've got a whole team of people with different areas of expertise that are dedicated to maximizing your chance of success in getting onto a course like this. So do not wait. <laughs> Make sure to get in contact with us. If you really do have any questions, we really want to be able to help you in whatever way we can. Um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask us, definitely have a look at answering some questions in the description below. We're really, really active uh, at the moment on our YouTube channel, and we would love to hear some more questions from you guys and facilitate more discussion around this course. Um, maybe there's a few tips as well that perhaps uh, you can suggest, actually, by putting it in the comment section, which we would love to hear about. Um, but it would be really, really cool to see some uh, discussion facilitated in that area. If you want to uh, also chat with us in person, you can also give us a call with the number on screen now, or you can follow the link in the description to visit our website where we are able to advertise all of the services that we offer. Um, but until we hear from you, best of luck with your application.